Hi everyone, welcome back to Pharmacology classes by MSR. So today in this video we will discuss about adverse event following the immunization. AEFI which indicates adverse event following immunization. So whatever adverse event which occurs after the immunization process, those events are called as AEFIs. So according to the definition, adverse event following immunization is any untoward medical occurrence which follows immunization and which does not necessarily have a casual relationship with the usage of the vaccine. Though it doesn't have any relationship, the adverse event whatever is developed, though it doesn't have any relation to our vaccine, but if it is developed after the process of vaccination, that is considered as AEFI. So the AEFI which is developed may be unfavorable, unintended sign or an abnormal laboratory finding or any symptom or any disease following the immunization process. So this AEFIs may be serious or minor. So the serious AEFIs are which results in the death of the patient, which requires hospitalization, which results in the persistent or significant disability or incapability or a cluster of AEFIs which occur in the same geographical area. Then we consider them as serious adverse events following immunization. Whereas the minor AEFIs includes usually which occur within a few hours of injection, which may resolve after a short period of time, which may have little danger, which may be local like pain, swelling or redness at the site of injection or systemic AEFIs like fever, malaise, muscle pain, headache, loss of appetite, etc. What are the causes of AEFIs? So due to the product what we are using, here we are using vaccination. So due to the vaccine product related reactions. So due to the inherited properties of this vaccine or the Defective quality of that particular vaccine, if a person develops the adverse events after this immunization process, then they are related to the vaccine product related reactions. So generally in a vaccine, we give attenuated antigens and we will be giving the immunization. So what happens is when these antigens enter into our body, attenuated antigens enters into our body, they will react with the immune mediators of our body, of our immune system. And our immunity will be improvised because we start developing the antibodies to against that particular antigens. That is very essential for the development of immunity. So during this process, after the immunization, the common areas which may be expected are redness at the site of injection, pain at the site of injection, swelling, fever. These are the mild areas that are happening after the vaccination process. According to the homeostatic mechanism, the general symptoms or the areas after the vaccination may be redness, swelling, that are the inflammatory responses because if a person has been injected, something is piercing into our body, so we develop the redness and swelling. So that redness and swelling, they are short-lived. The inflammatory responses are short-lived and there are no long-lasting consequences. But in some conditions, one or more components of our vaccine will cause some severe adverse reactions. Sometimes they may be life-threatening allergic reactions also. The AEFIs may be associated with the route of administration or the product characteristics. Some of the examples are Bell's palsy is a condition which is developed when we are giving the influenza vaccine by the intranasal route. So here the mechanism of this particular vaccine and the composition of a vaccine together they are causing this Bell's palsy. So this Bell's palsy is a condition where the facial nerves are not working properly. The inability of working the facial nerves which may result in the drooping of the mouth, inability to close the eyelids. And because of the administering of the vaccine by the root of injections, it may cause the pain at the site of that particular injection and it which may result in the physiological response. Immune mediated vaccine reactions. So this immune mediated vaccine reactions may be local reaction, a systemic reaction which involves the organs or which may involve multiple systems 
So the first one we will discuss about local reactions with the involvement of injection site due to one or more vaccine components. So a local reaction due to the vaccine components may be of two types. The first one is non-granulomatous inflammation and granulomatous inflammation. So the examples for the non-granulomatous inflammation is extensive limb swelling. So usually with the DTP vaccination we can see the extensive limb swelling. So when a person is being vaccinated they may have mild, moderate or local inflammation at the site of injection and the site of injection may cause slight pain, redness and swelling. And the purple may, some people may develop the hypersensitivity reactions also. Whereas the granulomatous inflammation can be seen usually with the BCG vaccine. The second type of reactions are multi-system reactions which are also called as generalized reactions. So one or more vaccine components may develop multi-system reactions. For example, a person develops a systemic inflammatory response which may result in the fever or lethargy. Degranulation of a mast cell can happen which may develop the hypersensitivity reactions. So this hypersensitivity reactions may be mediated by immunoglobulin E or non-immunoglobulin E mediated hypersensitivity reactions. As we have seen BCG vaccine usually is an granulomatous reaction. So disseminated granulomatous reaction is usually developed because of the BCG vaccine if given in an immunodeficient patient. Immunodeficient means their immunity levels are very less. Then immune complex mediated reactions like serum sickness reaction etc. The next type of reactions are organ specific reactions due to the components of vaccine. They may be autoimmune reactions or the underlying mechanism may be unknown or undefined. So one of the example is the demyelination condition such as gullian bar syndrome. gullian bar syndrome is a condition where the nervous system is being affected. After the influenza vaccination, the GBS syndrome can be happened. That is here the central nervous system being been affected. What is the organ affecting? Central nervous system. Then after the MMR vaccination, we can see thrombocytopenia as the adverse reaction. So here the organ affected is the blood. Then few other vaccinations may develop skin rashes, hypersensitivity reactions. So that the organ affected is the skin. The AEFIs are the adverse reactions may be developed because of the replication of the vaccine or any other microbes which are in contact with the vaccines. So what may be the microbial agents? It may be an attenuated vaccine agent or if it uh, inactivation is not done properly for the antigens which are included in that particular vaccine or due to the contamination of the vaccine during the manufacturing process. Vaccine quality defect related reaction. So the adverse event if it is followed by an immunization is caused because of the defective quality of that vaccine or due to the administration device then we have to immediately check which lot or which batch of the vaccine is causing that particular AE or the adverse event and immediately we have to inform to the manufacturer so and so batch of the vaccine is causing the adverse event and we have to take precautions for that utilization of that remaining vaccines in that batch or in that lot and it should be informed to the regulatory authorities and the WHO should be contacted through the UMC the Upasala monitoring center and the communication should be given for the other countries to whether to continue the use of that particular vaccine or not. Error in vaccine handling. So during storage, transportation, if our vaccine is exposed to excess of cold or heat, our vaccine may be inactivated or damaged. Or if you are not diluting the vaccine properly, then if the inactivation is not to the, up to the mark, it may be active and it may cause the adverse events. Sometimes agglutination may be developed in some vaccines which may develop the systemic or local reactions. And always we have to check the vaccine for its expiry date. If you are using the product or a vaccine which is 
already expired it doesn't produce optimate result the potency of that particular vaccine will be decreased error in vaccine prescribing or non adherence or non compliance to the recommendations for use so if a vaccine is contraindicated in any condition if you are using that if you are not adhering to that particular contraindication if you are failure to adhere that particular contraindication it may result in the various adverse events it may be development of anaphylaxis or a hypersensitivity reaction and disseminated infection with an attenuated live vaccine if you have not attenuating it properly in activating the virus properly in and if you are using that particular vaccine in an immunodeficient patient who doesn't have a proper immunity levels then it may cause the adverse events the vaccine associated paralytic polio may be developed in a immunocompromised patient when they are been given with the oral polio vaccine the error in the vaccine prescription or non adherence may also develop if you are not following the precautions and warnings mentioned on the particular vaccine if you are not compliant if you are not maintaining the compliance and but adhering to the instructions given by the physician if the vaccine indications or precautions are not followed you are supposed to give so and so dose you are not using the same dose you are scheduled to take a vaccine and so and so month but you are not taking that it may develop in the aef wise and if you are using incorrect dose it may develop systemic or local reactions if you are using a wrong product in a wrong age then also they may develop the aef wise and if the vaccine contains live attenuated product it develops the aef wise and if you are giving the incorrect injections at the wrong site or wrong equipment or different technique it may develop neurological muscular or vascular bone injury moving on to error in administration so if you are using an incorrect diluent or an injection of a product other than the intended vaccine then it may develop the failure of the vaccine then reaction due to inherent properties of whatever was administered other than the intended vaccine instead of our diluent you are adding some other diluent and if it is developing any adr or if you are not supposed to give vaccination to any person but by mistake wantedly or intentionally or unintentionally the vaccine is been injected to any person through the needles or it may be splashed by the splashed into the eyes it may develop the adrs that are error in administration some other condition which may also develop the error in administration are you are not maintaining proper sterile conditions when using a multi dose vials sterile conditions are not maintained or the infection may be caused at the site of injection or beyond the site of injection due to the microbial contamination if you are not maintaining safe environment after the immunization process or during the immunization process or sudden fall in the bp after the immunization process syncope is nothing but sudden fall in the bp what happens if you have sudden fall in bp you may faint which may result in the head injury all these are the errors in administration so many are scared for the vaccination or may be scared to the injection so this immunization anxiety related reactions because of the anxiety to get injected or immunized people may have extreme anxiety tension so they may also develop certain reactions because of that anxiety so always a vaccination should be done in a safe and ambient environment the aef wise will be developed because of the anxiety about the immunization so some of the reactions which may be developed due to the anxiety are vasovagal mediated reactions hyperventilation mediated reactions administration and thus by its nature it is preventable and stress related psychiatric disorders because of the anxiety they may have the bp fluctuations hyperventilation psychiatric disorders all this may be developed because of the immunization anxiety related issues immunization error related reactions so in the process of vaccination if the vaccine is not handled properly if the errors happen in the prescription process or during the administration wrong dosage wrong route of administration anything 
if any error happens then they are termed as immunization errors but all these immunization errors are preventable if the person who are involved in this process are properly trained then if care is taken then we can avoid this immunization errors inconsistent casual association to immunization coincidental so actually the adverse event whatever is developed is not related to our vaccine but it has developed uh, during this vax process of vaccination or after the vaccination so they are called as coincidental reactions so it may be an immunization error immunization anxiety so that is not the fault of the vaccine but it has been developed during your vaccination process so if this aef is developed then also we consider coincidental events are also considered as aef is only those aef is though they are coincidental we have to provide the information to the parents or to the patients or the relatives care providers whoever is available we should inform them yes so and so adr has been developed maybe it is a coincidental whatever information we have we have to give that particular information to the patients relatives or the care providers and to the community